Hey, Internet friend, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and magicbrad.com, and I've got my friend Ben Tice on the line. You there, Ben? I'm here. How's it going, Brad? Skull. Skull, indeed. <laughs> what, is, what does that mean? Is, is it kind of like, like saying goal? What is uh, no, like? it's more just a cheers. <laughs> it actually used to be as a battle cry, so it kind of works for both, uh, both things for our company with Skull Marketing. It's, uh, you know, cheers that we get our clients um, good results, but also yeah. sometimes that we are going to battle, sometimes either what's Google or competition, and uh, being able to get success there as well. <laughs> I, I always thought it was something like, it's a school. <laughs> Not so quite, but I guess that, you know, really though, the cheers kind of does play into that, you know, yeah. so celebration. So you, your goal or a goal-oriented digital marketing agency. Would you classify yeah. yourself as a digital marketing agency? Yep. Yeah. Because I know you go across the board, you deal with SEO and ads and Google. and Yeah, the main thing I like to tell people is we help our clients get online with web development or web optimization if it's maybe just changes or fixes to the um, you know, user experience or what or whatnot. And then we, enha we help them enhance their online presence with some of those things that you kind of talked about, search engine optimization that natural relationship between you and Google, search engine marketing and pay-per-click, the advertising opportunities between you and search engines, and then like social media, both the organic day-to-day -day side and the advertising side as well. Yeah, and I know you know what you're talking about because I've been to a couple of your seminars and yeah. uh, you know, it, I always tell people that uh, you, know, you can try and do this stuff on your own, but you guys have your finger on the pulse of what's going on and with the internet stuff is always changing. So. Mm -hmm you know that what happened yesterday isn't working today. So you wake up in the morning and get the latest update. Whereas, you know, if you're trying to run a business like a chiropractic or a dentist or whatever, you got to focus on your customers. You can't be farting around with all this other stuff. No, and that's honestly a, a huge conversation we always have with our clients. I always joke, but it's true. It's like half of my job is staying up to date because like, you know, as you've kind of talked about our workshops, you know, we offer free educational workshops and webinars, um, a lot of them around the Twin Cities here. Obviously, the webinars are any, anybody can kind of attend. But the point of those is to really kind of teach and implore people to, you know, look at these subjects, learn these subjects. Even if you're going to hire a company like myself, maybe have an employee on, you at least have that kind of base knowledge. But where I'm going with that is that, like, what we're teaching now, for instance, in SEO was vastly different seven years ago when I started the company. There's exactly. so many changes. Honestly, even last year, there's been so many changes within the algorithms when it comes to search, when it comes to you know uh, AdWords, when it comes to even Facebook and all these other things. They're changing so fast, and that's I something that we're able it, to do. It, even yesterday. Yeah, seriously, it's, it, it's insane, um, especially in the technology and the marketing kind of sphere, and those just go hand in hand, and both of those are even fast-changing markets on their own, and then when you put them together, it's crazy how just that, that change is fueled. But it is really good for the client to get a little bit of an understanding, so when you're talking, you're not speaking different languages, you can kind of, like, what is SEO? I've heard of it. Well, that's exactly. for search engine. Op Some people don't know. Yep. And, and we do that, some of that, even if people decide not to come to our workshops, one of our biggest things is education. Even if it's just educating our client to make sure that they fully understand what we're going to do and the benefit behind it. What, what I didn't want to do when I started school marketing was be kind of another uh, general SEO company or marketing company or web development company company that was just almost selling on fear saying like hey you may not know what SEO is but it's coming and you need to have it so why don't you just drop me a bag of money into the dark room over there I'll go pick it up and I'll take care of it for you it's not what I wanted to do and kind of change you know again try and evangelize what we're doing and really kind of help um, small business owners really understand well, that's what I like about your approach I mean when I had that kiosk at Ridgedale you came out you know, in person and show yourself. Yeah. That, that's why I do these videos because you get that no like and trust factor in place because there are a lot of people that do say put a bunch of money in a dark room and I'll get it later. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Yeah. So we, well, we try to bridge that, and, and, that, and that's what's interesting too is, you know, everything that we're essentially dealing with is online, but we obviously, like we like to say, you know, all of our products and services are mainly online, but we want to build offline relationships mm -hmm. um, because that's really where, and we have to bridge that online and offline um, kind of together. And that's really where we try to kind of approach the market differently than some that are out there and what has maybe has been done before. How long have you been at this? Were you a, a Netscape investor? 
I was I wasn't quite a Netscape investor, but I actually did use Netscape. So, but I've uh, um, I've had school marketing now for seven years, and then prior to that, I worked two years at Google. So I'm just oh. hitting that mark of about you know again ten years of really being specifically in this um, in this market. Wow. So yeah, and it, it it takes that you know it's a, I sometimes tell people I have to unlearn because you go back and you know, remember the old floppy drives and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, and, and honestly, even us, you know, too, it's, it's, you know, like I said, it's kind of updating. And so it's either it'd be educating people on the new ways, because there were ways that worked five years ago that just don't anymore. Some of those tools don't even exist, um, i.e. like even Google Plus, you know, I mean, like things like change right. like that. Also techniques, um, the way that we implement things like backlinks or content or things like that, that are going to change on SEO, that are going to change even on our website um, with design and user experience on our social media, how the algorithms change and what they're looking for. So all that kind of stuff changes. And I think the SEO is kind of like the way to go because the prospective customer is actually searching for something. So they're much mm -hmm. more probable to make a purchase rather than having stuff thrown at them. And now with yeah. the SEO thing, how do you know what is inside of a person's head when they're, I mean, you can do that, the, the, the keyword tool and all that kind of stuff. Is yep. that, are those valid, really good things that they, how yeah, do you know it's in their head? No, it, it's, a, it's a great question because it is one of the key components that we have to start with because a couple of things. One is, you know, with what, what SEO boils down to is someone is looking for your products or services and they don't know you exist. Right. So, and then, so it, that's really what it is, but it really kind of starts with, well, what are they searching for? And it's actually a question we have to, and a conversation we have all the time with our clients because most of, most of us with our business, we kind of have our set of own keywords on how we describe what we do and what we would search for. But that doesn't always mean that that's what, you know, person A, person B, B and person C are searching for. So sometimes we need to have those conversations is that I know that you may not be explaining yourself and you wouldn't search for that or maybe 100% describe your business like that. But at the end of the day, if the goal is to get someone that you can help to find you and be to become a client, we've got to figure out what they're searching for. Right. Yes, we want to utilize. So what we do is we start utilizing and we start getting an idea of what do you, how do you describe yourself? Then it's kind of like what you're kind of talking about is doing some keyword research and there's some really good tools out there that will help not only, you know, again, see what those kind of keywords are and the analytics and the metrics behind that, but then also we kind of call it the discovery um, part of it where we're also trying to figure out and discover what someone else would be searching for that would be related to that. And that doesn't always honestly happen just, just like that. That could be, you know, again, sometimes depending on the industry is most likely going to be a process. Well, like in the events industry, somebody might type in how to write an RFP and somebody go, what is an RFP? Well, that's a request. Mm -hmm. Or pro oh, I didn't know that. Or yep, like yep. Um, uh, a certified meeting professional, the abbreviation for it is a CMP. So you try and be, how, how can I be a CMP? Nobody knows what that is. And you have to actually be in the industry. So that, yep, what yep. you're talking about, you take some time to learn about the real estate industry, learn about the dentist industry, learn about the customer to find out what their buzzwords and Hashtag. Exactly. And, and, and like I tell people too, is, you know, we, we have to do some research within your industry, but that's why we also say that any of our clients, it becomes a partnership. If you just throw the keys at me and want me to drive the car without any instructions on, you know, in the vehicle, I can most likely get it down there, but it's not as going to be as successful for you. I have a, we have a really good formula on essentially kind of what works and, you know, obviously through years of experience, as well as keeping up to date with the new um, techniques and um, strategies that are out there we know what to do. We just need some of those ingredients. And that's why we always say it's always a partnership right. if we're really going to make this work. I like your analogies. It's kind of like, here's the keys to this fighter jet. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it, it's true. And, and yeah, and, and honestly, it's kind of funny you talk about analogies because I use analogies all the time to try to explain these. And really one, one of my key things that I try to do is some of these, you know, again, subjects aren't very fun to people, are very heady, are very, you know, again, technical. And it's, you know, again, it's my job to really kind of break them down and be able to kind of communicate those people. So at least we can, like I said, at the beginning, have a base understanding of what we're talking about and be both on the same page. Well, perfect. Well, like I said, I don't like to do these too long. I like to get them out in front of people and uh, don't take too much of their valuable time. We've only got 24 hours in a day, you know? Yes. So I'm going to sign this one off. If you want to stay on, we'll have a little bit of a chat, but I'm going to close the recording and and beam it up to the universe and let the people find it. Okay? Sounds good. Thanks, Ben. Peace. Thank you. Skull.